Hello and welcome to the 10th part in our Dominion 6 guide for new players. In this part we're going to continue our expansion and start finding out more about the world around us. I hope the other episodes have already gotten you ready for the tactical considerations in the game when it comes to looking at armies and comparing statistics. So last episode we had a bunch of battles and we're riding high. Let's have a quick step back and look at the world now so we have a better look at it from our scouting and conquest. Remember, Dominion 6 is a new system where you cannot see the world prior to you discovering it. In Dominions 4 and Dominions 5, you could at least see the map so you knew the layout. Now it's much more important, if you can, to scout out the world before you move your armies there. Last thing you want is to leave yourself backtracking and not continuing your expansion path. What do I mean by that? Well, for your first 12 turns, thinking about your expansion path is very important. You want to minimise travelling time and backtracking that your commanders and troops take, by which I mean not conquering provinces and moving through your own as much as possible. In games such as ours, with our current map layout, that's not all possible. Sometimes the map generation means you'll be wasting potential turns of conquest. Do not worry about that unless you're in a cutthroat multiplayer game. In single player, you should still be able to secure yourself enough provinces that you'll be a credible threat in the mid game. Otherwise, as it was introduced in Dominion 6, you can always use diplomacy to help you. Anyway, back to the game. We have 1,437 gold, which is a considerable amount. We should invest this where we can. Let's start moving our forces. We'll take our profit in Hamain and get him to start moving into the forest of Gila. He has a rather sizable army at this point, so moving into the forest of Gila, he'll be able to move into any of these provinces around it and be able to fight them, taking minimum casualties. For our new hero, Frithagarn, we're going to take him and we're probably going to attack Kohnberg. Not only is the farmland valuable, but there's also a bridge connection here, which brings us close to the lands of Bandar Log. We want to move there as fast as possible so we can take this bridge and control this river crossing here. Let's have a little look at Ursnek. Now we have to decide where we want to send Ursnek. We could send him to the Shadow Glaive, but to be honest, we've already got our forces moving up. They'll probably be able to take that next turn. I don't really fancy going into the swamp, especially without Dominion. There's a few Jaguar tribe warriors. They're not the best troops. However, there is quite a few of them. And given the amount of damage our snake took against the Ictiads, I don't feel too confident about that. There is also the province of Black Waters, which now that we can actually see into the province, as our Dominion has spread to it, actually has a lot of income for the amount of I was disparaging it. So I think we're actually going to go there, just to secure ourselves some more income. Yeah, let's send our snack there. This will also give us the benefit of being able to scout out more of this land to the west of us here, and we'll be able to see hopefully a bit more Bandar Logs territory. Let's move on to Folk. So Folk was unfortunate enough not to find any air sites at all in Ionia. We'll send him over to Felden Forest so you can try again there. We also have the additional air mage that we got last turn, Conrad. We're actually going to select him and we're going to send him to Hermain to also start scouting for air sites. As for our recruitment, we're rich. We're going to go to Ulm and we're actually going to start queuing up priest smiths here. The priest smiths give as many resource bonuses as our master smiths, but they're not quite as good at forging and they don't have a magic random. They are, however, wholly level one, which means with their pass they can cast the iron darts and iron blizzard we spoke about last time but they're also capital only units. If a unit is capital only, it can only be recruited in your capital. And with your limited commander points per round in a province, it's quite valuable to be able to recruit as many of them as you can. Amassing as many priest smiths as we can early on will help us later on. We can only recruit so many per round, so starting early will help us later on. As for our other troops, we'll get ourselves five knights and probably a bunch of infantry of all, as many as we can recruit. There we are, we're now resource locked. We still have some gold, so we're going to start recruiting some generic troops. Let's have a look at Forest of Gila. So we have what looks like Bear Tribe with either Spears and Javelins or the guys with just the hatchets. Okay, they aren't the best troops, but we should probably get a couple of these guys with the Spears and the Javelins. They have a ranged attack and fairly okay melee attack. We can do worse, plus we have the gold that we want to spend. So let's get a couple of these guys here. Our armies can pick these guys up as they pass through the province. We can also see in the Forest of Gila that it has another nature mage for us to be able to recruit, who does have potential to get an earth pass as well. 
he isn't bad, but I think we'd actually prefer the, the druid that we can get in Felden Forest. This one has the bad researcher trait, or sorry, the inept researcher trait, so it means that his research points won't be worth quite as much. Given as well that he doesn't have the unhindered research ability, he will not be producing many research points per turn. So he'd really only be useful for his nature skill. Okay, coming out of this, we're actually going to turn on repeat recruitment here so we don't have to keep spamming out all these bear tribe warriors. We'll probably turn it off in a bit, but for now we can always use with the extra troops. Let's also get another scout over here in Hamein. Intelligence is really key for turn-based games like Dominion, so if you can see your enemies coming, you can plan to counter them. If you play blind, you may just get caught out and destroyed from fighting a force you weren't prepared to attack or defend against. We have a little bit of gold left as well, so we should probably go about and increase the province defense on our new provinces. Let's just get everything up to 10. This will help us reduce the unrest in all of these provinces, and mean that we can keep our lovely gold. So we're going to go through all of our provinces, and we're going to increase the province defense to 10. There we are. Excellent. That should be everything up to 10 now. Let's have a look at the Tiffian Sea. So in the Tiffian Sea, yep, so we can recruit this shaman, but we do need a lab and a temple. Ugh, that's a bit annoying. We can see that these guys here are water one mages with a chance for nature. Again, they are inept researchers, but the fact that they're amphibious and water mages, which we don't have access to otherwise, means they can be quite useful. Unfortunately, uh, they are sacred, so they need a temple as well as a lab, and I'm not sure how we're going to be able to get a temple down here. The lab, Earthsnet could build himself. The temple will need to get on another water-breathing sacred in order to do, or find the correct magical item. So we might be a little bit snookered for that for a while. Okay, let's press N. We can see here Erectus. We're going to send him to Strongdale over towards the Bandar Log Territory to get us some more information. We also have Herman, who's underneath the ground here. We're going to send him further into Lightless Cavern to find out more about the caves. And with that, that's all of our commanders done. Let's uh, bring it up to the world map. We still have a little bit of gold. I might actually recruit an additional scout over here in Yankeep. And while I'm here... Yeah, so we can see here that Frithagurn is definitely on hold, hold, and then attack rear. So I think he has just been getting caught up in his bodyguards a little bit. We can see as well our cavalry are also on hold and attack rear, so they should be going off about the same time, as long as nobody gets stuck. Okay, so we've done our actions, and we've done our recruitment for this turn. We're not going to, as I said before, we're not going to recruit anything in the Muradon or the Mosswoods. Let's double check our research. Yep, so we should be finishing up Conjuration 2 this turn, and then two turns we'll get Conjuration 3, and then we'll start working on construction. Great. Yep, we have no more commanders, we've done our actions, we've done our research, and we've done our recruitment. Let's end the turn here. Okay, yeah, there we go. Our research and Conjuration is done. This is the start of winter. Let's have a little look at Comberg and see how our men have done attacking these independent forces. So we can see here they have three commanders. They've got a fair few heavy infantry. There go the Black Knights on both sides. They're getting a little bit bogged down. These militia here should start running soon. And their commander seems to have come over here to fight. Ah, there we go. They've all routed. Fantastic. Good job, guys. Good job, boys. Yep, there we go. Nicely done. How many losses do we take? Absolutely none. Eight kills on the Black Lord. 49 the Black Knights. Black Knights absolutely crushing it. Let's have a look at the Battle of Black Waters, see how our god does here. I'm sure he'll be absolutely fine, but it's always good to see. Ah, there they are. I couldn't see them there for a second. So we have a bunch of Shamblers here. They aren't the strongest troops. They don't have very good attack or defense skill. They do do decent damage because of their high strength, but, you know, I think we'll be fine. There's not that many of them, and they're already running. Yeah, there we go. Wasn't even close. Good job, our snake. There we are. An unexpected event happened in Comberg. Misfortune plus one. Excellent, thank you very much. And in Ulm. <laughs> okay, so an adventurer has come and he's stolen off us all of our blood slaves we got last turn. Oh well, we weren't really going to use them for anything anyway. Uh, that's just kind of funny. Okay, and with that, we have finished our recruitment of our first priest smith here, Rothari. He's going to be useful for us because he is obviously a priest, which means he can construct temples. So we're going to send him over to Felden Forest so he can start doing that. For folk, we're going to get him to search this province here. 
we are actually going to tell folk to cast a couple of spells. We're going to get them to cast Personal Stone Skin. Probably get them to cast Hawk. And then we might just get him to run after that. Potentially. He can't cast Personal Misform. I guess we'll get him to cast Burn. And we'll just get him to cast spells. So if he gets caught out by something, he'll just do this. Hopefully he'll be okay. We'll get him to search there. I'm going to get Conrad to search over here. I'm going to give him those spells as well, just so he does something in combat. We'll move our new scout. Not here, actually. I maybe want to send him down into the depths here. Just so we can scout out more about these caverns, because I really want to send an army down here when we can. Our new scout in Humane, we're going to start heading towards Eklund. Uh, and here we go. We're starting to get a little bit more knowledge of the Bandar Log territory here. These guys shouldn't be too bad. We're going to actually send the, the scout into the Spring Spires. Send Frithigern into Eklund. And we're going to send Lothar into the Shadow Glade. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. We found an Ursite by the looks of things in Black Waters. That's nice. You know, beggars can't be choosers and all that. One Earth Gem is one Earth Gem. You've got to be happy with it. As for the Earth Sneck himself, I really don't want to go into the pit. That's an awful lot of independent troops. We could take him into Enbon, but again, that's potential for a lot of troops. And there's a bunch of enemy dominion in Godhaven. So there must be another pretender in Godhaven somewhere. Okay. Always make sure that you right-click and check these things before you start sending your god into places. Otherwise, he could end up being in trouble. I think we will just end up sending Ursnek into the pit. It's not going to be worth very much, but at least we'll get something out of it. And we're not wasting a turn moving about. We're going to get 10 problems defense in the Black Waters. We'll do the same in Kohlberg. Yeah, 142 income. That's pretty nice for us. Really cannot complain. I think as well, we'll get another scout. We might actually tell Galbus to move to the Forest of Gila. And we're probably going to start constructing another fortification here as well. There's no point falling behind on that. As for Lothar's troops, he's just going to stick all his undisciplined guys together. They're just going to do what they want. So we'll, they'll just run up. They'll start hitting things. We'll also have our main line of units just holding to attack the closest enemy. And then we'll have another flanking force of cavalry coming around the side. I think we should be able to deal with these independents pretty easily. Let's go on a bit more to our recruitment. We're going to get another, ma not Master Smith, sorry, another Priest Smith. And we're going to get a bunch more cavalry and a bunch more infantry of Ulm up to there. Perfect. Okay, excellent. Um, we might actually get folk to construct a lab now, just so we're not floating too much gold. What can we recruit in Kohlberg? We can recruit militia and another scout. Let's get another scout. Excellent. Okay, cycling through our commanders, we've got Herman, who's currently in the depths. Let's send him up to the Hot Hallows. And we can see here that there is actually a gateway here in the Sanguine Swamp that comes down into this bit here, which links to the caves in our lands. So we are going to have to be a little bit careful about the underground. There is a potential path to our capital from here. Fortunately, I think we can put a castle in Mile Deep, and I could still be bypassed in the hole. Once we get some more information over here, we'll maybe see if there's another easy choke point that we can use, like, say, the Lightless Cavern over here, which has... Whew, that is quite a high population again. This definitely seems like the underground, for this generation at least, is very good for us. We'll definitely need to try and take that. With our high protection, we should be okay, even with our poor stats. All right, pressing N again. Okay, there's no more commanders to move, so that's everybody done. Let's have a little look at our research again. So we can see that we'll probably get done conjuration about three turns. That's not great, but it's not terrible either. And we've done most of our recruitment for now. I don't think we want any more cavalry here. I think we're just quite happy with these bear tribe warriors for the moment. We'll get our scout to start building a fortification next turn. As you can see, our income has skyrocketed. Look at the money that we're getting. Ulm is obviously worth the most because it has the highest population. But look at Amuridon, Amain, Forest of Gila. In fact, to be honest, all of our provinces are pretty good. These are obviously also helped by our scales. We have quite positive scales other than the heat. So it's improving our income somewhat. Okay, and with that, I think that's the majority of our plans. We really need to see more about Bandar Log. So I'm happy we're getting our scout into there. And I really want to see where this 
third nation is as well. We know it must be around here, unless this is Bandar Log's dominion. But I'm not so sure. It doesn't... could potentially be. But, yeah. Interesting. The dominion that we can see, or I guess it could just be the scales in this province, but we've got Death 2, Eat 2, Sloth 2, Order. Okay, we'll have to take that into consideration. They could have much stronger god or blesses than us, so we'll have to take that into account. Either way, we've done our actions, we've done our recruitment, we have a little bit of gold left, we've added in our province defense. I think we're pretty happy with how things are going just now. Let's end the turn. Okay, so Conrad searched to Maine and nothing happened. There was a battle in the pit. So this is Ursnek attacking these guys here. There's a fair number of troops, but he should be fine. He's got his personal stone skin. They can't attack him that much. Oh, yeah, the, those guys there, the little guys, the Atlanteans, are already running. They're scared. Shamblers are running. There we go. They've already routed. Nice and easy. Can't complain about that. You can maybe complain a little bit about the province, but you can't complain about the results. Okay, this is the battle in Eklund. This is with our Black Lord. We can see here that there's a bunch of Jaguar tribes. They're just fairly awful. I say they're fairly awful. I think they might have just killed one of our units. But they're not that great, um, almost militia, tribal kind of units. Yeah, I think one of our horses just died. Oh no, he's back here. Is he crippled? No, he's... He's, oh, okay, is he fighting a bush? No. Okay, I'm not sure why he's fallen so far behind, but we can see here that a Black Lord and his men have managed to kind of route behind here. They aren't quite going for this guy back here, which is a bit unfortunate, but... Oh, there we go, they're fighting a tree. The most climactic battle you've ever seen. And over here, they've killed the, the commander and the enemy army is routed. Excellent. Let's have a little look. No, we didn't take a casualty. It just seemed like that guy got stuck on something. Maybe he was fighting a bush off screen. Who knows? And then we also had another battle in Shadowglaive. Or Shadowglade, rather. So here we are. We've got our Prophet Lothar and his new army, which is quite a sizable force, as you can see now. And he's going to be fighting off against these militia. I don't foresee this being a problem at all. We can see our horse tribe guys are shooting. We've got a couple of javelins coming out. Our bear tribe warriors have taken a couple of hits. That's fine. We just kind of want them there to tank a little bit for us. And our infantry of all, we're just going to fight until they win the battle, which they will do through numbers, grit, and determination. And over here, we can see our cavalry have already routed the, the flank. They're mopping up the survivors. Excellent. Okay, how many casualties do we take there? We lost a couple of bear tribe, we don't care about that. We did lose two infantry of Ulm and two pioneers, which is a shame, but you know what? Losses are going to happen, we've just got to kind of accept it. There was an unexpected event that occurred in Hamein. Misfortune, a worldwide event. It's very harsh this winter, so there's extra cold. And a great storm has blown and healed a bunch of units. Okay, cool, excellent. Let's have a quick look at the map. Ah, here we go. So we're starting to see a little bit more into Bandar Logs. So I don't think this is their dominion. I guess it could be. Yeah, it could potentially be them if their dominion spread over. We don't really have enough information on this part of the world. So we'll need to find out what happened. But we took the pit. We took Eklund. We took Shadowglade. We're doing pretty well. We'll have a little bit of an overview about everything we've taken. But we're currently on... Turn 10, and things are looking pretty good. I think our income is insane. But I think we'll end the episode there. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave them in a comment, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.